time for another tutorial. We got Krios unmasked, which I guess it's a big deal for him to take off his helmet. He's never before been seen without it. Menoth, white base. He's not working for the Kador guy, so we're starting with white. He's not blue, so he's not Signar. We're going to put this on with the airbrush today. <clears throat> um, instead of doing hand coats, he has a lot of white armor. Uh, it is the hardest color by far to get coated on. We are hand blending everything else. We're not blending with the airbrush. We are just using the airbrush as a tool to get a nice solid base coat of this armor on. And then we're going to hand brush other stuff. So I'm going light pressure, pretty thin paint. However you want to add it to your airbrush. Uh, what I do is I add the thinner first and then I take I take the paint on the brush and kind of dip it down in there and then uh, squiggle it around wipe off the brush into the thinner it's going on a little speckly because I got my pressure low I don't want to blow this stuff out and create texture on the model I'm not blending anything it's a base coat See, I'd turn my pressure up and the speckliness goes away so I'm going to get all of his armor base coated with this airbrush. And see, I, I don't coat it fully. I go in, I get, I get a, you know, a decent like half coat on it. And then I come back and I'll make sure to get a good solid coat. If I'm not sure what's going to be white armor and what's not, I go ahead and paint it since I already got it in my airbrush. We can paint over it anyway. We're going to paint over it with our brush. So, I'm getting this knocked in. And after these messages, be right back. See, this is the second coat on the shoulder. It gets nice and solid. So, get your airbrushes out. Paint it on. If you don't have an airbrush, go buy one. Alright, we got our men off uh, base color on for the armor. Now I'm going to take black and brown, and just like the last Menoth character that we did, we're going to start blocking out our colors. So this is just a solid base coat. Before I put this on though, I'm going to hit this with a little bit of a matte varnish. When you airbrush colors on, it can give it a little bit of a texture. That texture will cause tiding or pooling, where it pulls color into that texture. We don't want that to happen, so I'm going to hit that with a varnish real quick. All right, the varnish that I threw on there was uh, the Army Painter matte varnish. It used to be called Anti Shine, but it is just a matte varnish. Um, so I'm going to go in, pick the areas that I know I want to be gold. Um, I know traditionally his whole staff here is going to be gold, and then areas like his gauntlets, this little face mask. Um, a lot of the trim elements are purple, uh, or the, I mean, I don't want to say purple, it's a burgundy color. Um, but I'm going to pull up a reference on my phone, that way I can see what's going to be what. Jury's still out on what we're going to do for this helmet. I've got a message in to see what faction, maybe a mercenary faction. Um, it looks a little bit Signor to me, but I want to make sure. I know the tops of these are going to be gold. Um, pictures kind of go back and forth between like the epic mounted Krios and then the Krios Krios. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that kind of split the difference. I know that all these elements here are gold. Got a lot of gold. He's a high ranking dude. Alright, we got the base color for our gold in. We're going to get a base color for our uh, burgundy. So violet, red oxide, and magenta is our mixture, just like with our previous Minoth guy. So purple's really strong. Probably made a mistake adding that much purple to this mixture to start with. And the red is just to bring it more into our burgundy tone. Our burgundy is done with the magenta and purple mixture. 
All right, so you can see where I put the gold before we get going in the magenta burgundy, even though I'm already going. Um, <clears throat> so little pipes around his neck, these little orchestral pipes, left them white at the bottom. That seems to be the, the older scheme. Um, so we're keeping ties with that, capped in the gold. The backpack little area here is the cream color. And then all of this is going to be the, the men off burgundy. We got all this trim and stuff to do. Uh, mixture will apply pretty light over the, uh, the cream color. So we're going to need a couple coats, a couple hefty coats of our uh, burgundy to get in there. Uh, but I'm going to finish this up and then spin them around real slow like this so you can see what I did as gold and what is left because we still have blacks and steels to do after this and then other little detail colors but those are minor all right we got our burgundy in probably one of the more uh, intensive layers for this guy he's got a lot of burgundy going on and a lot of detail going on uh, some of the cracks and areas pretty hard to get into um, like down on the shoulder pads i decided to go ahead and assemble him which might have been a mistake uh, but that's going to be choice of operation to get things down in between these shoulder pads and that. And you can see he got some stuff on his nose and forehead. And there's paint where it shouldn't be, but we'll clean that up as we move along. Next, we want base colors for our steel. So we're using a light turquoise and black. And I'm just going to mix up a base coat for that. I just want to blue up this black a little bit. And this will be the basis for building our steel color up. So anything that's going to be metal, he's got this chain mail and that. This darker blue black is what we're going to base coat in. The uh, the head is Signar. I got confirmation on that. I, I guessed that. I said it before the video. So Ron, if you're watching this, it was uh, I knew what it was. I just didn't want to make assumptions and get it wrong. Spend an hour painting it. Um, so here, the blade, the handle, this little spike down here. Um, all this chain mail back in here is going to be that dark color. So we're going to start dividing up our shapes and volumes a little bit more. Um, he's got chain mail here. Uh, these little spikes on his gauntlets, we'll go ahead and do those in, in a steel. He doesn't have a lot of steel, so this is a pretty quick area. The symbols that are on his knees, uh, forearms and shoulders and elbows. He's got elbow symbols. So eight on each side. Those are going to be uh, black. So we're going to do black with kind of a fade up to like a medium gray for the, the edging on these little angular uh, symbols. And I don't think there's any other symbols. We'll address the Signar helmet at the end and his face and, and uh, and hair, of course, are going to have their own colors. Um, he's got some gnarly scars here from being a, a zealot doing that crusading. I know Minoth is all about fire and brimstone. Um, but I'll get those done and then we'll move on. All right, we are done with base colors except for the little head thing there. I'm going to go ahead and hit the ground. Um, his hair, of course, is going to change color, so maybe not done done, but pretty much done. Uh, four hours for base colors on this guy. He's uh, pretty intense just to keep things every, not even in line, because there's a lot going on. We have our base for steel, and he's got a lot of chain mail, which has got to be heavy and uncomfortable. And his cloak's really long, so he's dragging that stuff. He is plowing the ground as he moves along. Um, we got hammered copper as the base kind of a, a marking for the flesh tone probably put another coat on there build it up from there um, but other than that i'm going to grab a generic brown one second well no i see one earth grab some earth didn't know how long i was going to have to look for that i'm going to go ahead and slather that on the base now, last time we did Beastie, but I kind of neutraled it out a little bit. We always put that wash over the ground. And I'm just taking a really crappy brush. 
and massaging that uh, earth into the texture here. I'm, get, I'm getting this step out of the way because I know I'm going to have overages with it. And because of all the stuff that's like really close to the ground with this guy. And I know I can repaint that sort of stuff when I'm in the detail phase. So planning, planning, planning. Just thinking about how I'm going to do things while I'm painting other things. I'm glad I airbrushed the the Minoth base color because we'd probably be sitting at like five and a half hours just for this, <laughs> which would be, I guess, um, a decent like passing tournament. Got flat colors on there. They're in the right spot. They might be a little wiggly in some areas. I gotta finish doing this and stop boring you with my chatter. Uh, Alright, let's get started on some armor. Uh, our shadow. 50-50 <clears throat> of uh, Thornwood Green and Minoth White base. The last Minoth model we did. A little darker, a little moodier. Um, the Hollow Man. So we're, we're keeping this guy just a little bit brighter. He's a little more regal. Uh, less... Uh, Less dirty, not less dirty, less dark, less moody. He can still be dirty. He's still got some weathering and stuff going on. Um, and he's got his little, you know, battle scars and stuff. But his armor, I might have to go back and read the notes. Let me read the notes real quick. All right, been off, standard. Not super weathered or anything, just battle hard and scarred face. <clears throat> so the mix of Thornwood and the Minoth white base, uh, keeping our shadows um, a lot lighter than just going to straight thorn, Thornwood green. And I'm going through and I'm marking uh, again like we did on the previous model, just using this uh, uh, lighter shadow to mark in. Sorry, tongue tongue and paintbrush no work at the same time um, definitely putting in shadows intersections you know, so little parts that come together um, definitely putting shadows in interest areas um, the shadow is going to coat fairly poorly but they'll blend nicely uh, definitely doing some volumetric shadows here so thinking about the leg, you know, being in there under shadow. Um, and, you know, I'd say you can already see shadow placement plays a, a pretty big role in decision making. There might be a few areas where I go really dark. You know, like this, this little area down in here. Um, and then in the vents, I think Menoth is like heat related. So I might do some heat stuff down in there. I'm not sure. I'm still thinking. Um, up here on the shoulder pad, we're going to start our shadows up and then go brighter toward the front just to draw the interest across the model. I know, like, traditionally some of his highlights go the opposite way. Um, I like to, to move my shadows down. And usually I get good good response from that, so... Doing that with this guy as well. But I'll finish out a layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep blending out this Minoth into this mix here. So palette control, mixing into my mint, have my parent pools. Don't mix all your colors together. Like be able to draw your colors from your parent pools. That way you can continue to sort of mix and work on things. And then just kind of feather the next layers in. It might take a couple couple passes before they're good and ready but you see how quickly that already blends out and that's that's what we're looking for keep your brush stroke across your lines so I, my, I'm doing short little agitations across instead of pulling the brush down which you know feels natural and 
instinctually is correct. Um, but the uh, the feathering will help you blend, so you can do a few less layers to get a smoother look. So it's it's like cross hatching. It's a little bit of a an optical illusion to feather those things out. And then we're going to work our way all the way up to the the white highlight. But that's after we get all these shadows in. All right, I pulled out the highlight uh, just because as I'm working on this, I want to see what. The end result is I get finicky. Uh, highlight, Menoth highlight, white highlight, P3 color. Um, so it is staged up twice with the Menoth base color, adding highlight in until we get to the pure highlight. The pure highlight is mainly just edges on the lower parts of the leg. I um, also played with the purple a little bit. Uh, not purple, what do we call it? Uh, I always forget the name of that color. Uh, burgundy. Uh, play with the burgundy a little bit. It's kind of, it's purpley right now. I'm glazing it back. Um, <clears throat> it's got kind of a purpley base to it, so it gets bubble gummy. Uh, so the highlights in here, progression, a little bit of a drop shadow in this area. Same up here with our, uh, kind of our layered, we get this uh, edge that pops out, so we drop shadow in there. You can see where I use the white, white highlights for edge highlights kept this plate pretty flat didn't put a shadow on it just dropped a shadow where the helmet is shadows in here same for this little gauntlet area um, brighter highlights on the top side what's facing in I haven't painted past the helmet yet just this leg area and then starting to work on the elbow um, but again just progressive highlights in these areas um, applying very sparingly with the the highlight because the highlight gets pretty desaturated. Um, if, you, if you get a too much of it on the model, it just looks kind of white, less cream, and the uh, Menoff guys are a lot creamier than uh, than they are white. I'm going to continue to highlight work up on this armor, and then we'll, we'll have a discussion. I might come back and film an example on this uh, big open shoulder area that's really easy to see. Alright, armor's almost done. I'm going in on the shoulder pad here to kind of demonstrate how I did the uh, the smooth shadow here, or smoothish. Um, so starting with a little bit of a high mixture of our shadow here. Um, same on the back side. Uh, this one's already done, of course. This, you can see the line where I started in, kind of laying in that shadow. Um, doing a slight step up so this is our previous shadow and again it's the color the way that it goes on and you have to be a little cautious of this is it it goes on very light and dries much darker the thornwood green and the cream color like to interact with each other when mixed that make them appear like they're really kind of in the same tone. Even the pure thornwood over just this uh, cream color will look almost the same color and then all of a sudden it'll dry and it'll be really, really dark. Um, so trust your palette, trust your values that you see on your palette um, and how they will dry. And you can see there that blended together really nicely. And that's using that feathering brush stroke little tiny agitations here on the brush stroke in order to get that to blend out and you see the difference here on the palette just a tiny difference there and just starting in the shadow and pulling out toward the where the highlights gonna be and then if you're having trouble getting blends I'm just demonstrating, like, I load my brush here, do a quick brush lick. You can make a glaze if you want. I like to spit blend my stuff a lot. Helps make it a little bit quicker. And then mix a step up here. Again, trust in my palette. And I'm going to pull toward my highlight, toward the end of the shoulder pad, starting in the middle leaving some of that past cream color, men off base color. 
right? And then turning the model and making sure I get a coat all the way into this spot in the shoulder pad. And then just kind of smoothing out the pigment. Pigment's a little bit thick on these colors. So I want to keep from getting brush strokes by smoothing them out. You can see, you can see like a little bit of a step up. You go back, take some of that middle tone, quick brush lick, and just feather it out to blend it a little bit. And I take another step up toward my pure Minoff White highlight. And see, I didn't go all the way, all the way up to my Minoff White highlight. I might pull some some lines with it. And see how I'm, I'm taking my brush and I'm pulling, using my crab claw grip here to pull away from the shoulder pad. Typically I'm more of a pin grip painter, so I would turn the figure like this. But as long as your bristles are running toward the handle of the brush, then that is a good grip to have. You don't want to be pushing or going too side side to side very much. You want to let the bristles act and distribute pigment how they should. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of this highlight and just pull a line from back in here. I don't want to go all the way back. <laughs> going this way. So I get kind of an edge that runs. Same thing over here. I'm going to start, do a little bit of a curve. There, so you can kind of see how the, the armor brightens up in there. And that's it. That's how I did all the armor. Armor is done now. Um, see, we got really dark back here in the shadows. And on this side here, where there's not as much of a light source. Oh, armor's not all done. I got those two areas to do. Um, but back up in here, it's almost as dark as the black metal as well. Alrighty, got a big time warp here. Jump into the gold. <clears throat> so uh, as you can see, started up the gold. Recipe is black into brown. My go-to, the sculpturous brown. Nice, rich, yellowy brown. And then to top it off, the Minoth white highlight. To keep our highlights warm and not completely desaturated. Plus it vibes real nice since the highlight for the armor is that Minoth white. Um, just to give you guys an example of the process, let's paint this little uh, tube here. So you can see my palette control today sucks. Also I had to nuke my palette with peroxide because I had a little bit of a Last of Us situation going on with the palette. So I get it in a good position here. So as I tell people a lot in like direct light and painting faces things, I don't want to like paint my pattern or my details like starting out. I want to block in areas. So even though there's this nice kind of coral pattern going on in the cylinder the light is hitting it so directly that it's going to knock out shadows. The shadows won't be as dark, right? It's always nice to have like deep dark shadows and details and stuff. <clears throat> like on the, the handle and things here, but yeah, <laughs> don't want to go in and individually highlight each one of these little shapes or I would never be able to turn in a model on time. So going in just taking a mixture of our black and brown, Sculpher's Brown, building it up. You can see my mixing pools here. So these are my mixing pools that I've been using uh, for better part of a day now, painting these up. So you can see how I go in, a remix. I have my reference kind of here. Dry, dry. I've been having to paint this guy quickly. He's due soon. One of those times when my mouth and my hands won't work together. Trying to keep things 
going. But continuing to layer up, we'll let that dry for a second while we talk about some of the other areas. So cloth painted in a little bit of a rough, sketchy way, still golden, but not brought up like super high like some of the other areas. Um, cylindrical highlights, of course, you have that line. If I look at my paintbrush, see how that white line travels around my brush? They're always going to shoot a white line because this is black. It's shiny. See that white line? I'm rolling my brush. Still got that highlight, right? So cylinder object. These can be counted as cylinders, but I'm kind of painting them as round flats just to give them that, uh, you know, that divided look. Uh, still got a little bit of an edge highlight that I do around them on the top after I fade toward the pinch, really, in the middle. Um, flats fading toward uh, away from the light source. So if you have a flat and your light's coming down, that's going to gonna fade away following my armor patterns here and these little flats um, following the armor pattern again with this gold here coming up to the top of the foot and bleeding down the backside what else oh spheres this guy's got a lot of spheres on him so uh, spheres pointing up toward the light source you know this is kind of his uh, his portrait angle so making sure that you know we're looking at that light source got those nice and gold glints going on Fingers, kind of in the same vein as painting this coral pattern. We're wanting to make sure that we get the basic like hot dog shape of the finger knocked in first, uh, and then start worrying about the texture. I start worrying about the texture like the step right before the midtone, so it'll be this next color we do, not the one I'm doing right now. So I'm treating this kind of like a cylinder. And again, this is example, so I might go back and touch things up because I'm trying to paint in front of the camera. So if final pictures look a little bit different, just know I'm using all the same colors, I'm doing all the same steps. This is just so you guys can see how I apply. The detail and the tweaking is the same, it's just on a smaller scale. And I gotta get in closer with the model when I do that. All right, so now, see we're up one step here. All right. So we'll start pulling a little bit of edge away, and then come down a little bit of an edge away, come down. And then this is where Got to start picking out these shapes. Which is TDS. So I'm trying to keep them in this sort of cylinder vein. And what I do is I'll break away and do like a few little dots. Edge highlights, if I can, if I can grab them well. And then solid in filling in the shape the closer to my light source I get. Yeah, so getting close to that middle and then going in and locking that down a little bit more. And that's how I get like this look in here and then this look on the, the shoulder pad there. I'm um, keeping it pretty dark on the back, not going way up to my highlight. Just this guy's got a lot going on, so there's a lot of deep inset shadow. And I want to make sure that he's he's darker on the back. Um, you can see you know, a good example here. It's like it's not going all the way up, but it identifies as that metal. Come in and that layer's dry. So I want to reinforce that color a little bit. Add some edge highlights. And I can't gain weight. My belly be sticking like all the way. It's like right here. <laughs> Up to the bar. Making sure 
you guys can see what's going on. Just picking out a few edges here and there because that light is going to grab edges, right? So we want to make sure that we're accounting for that because they're at all different angles. They get glints that come in. All right, now we get to our pure yellow, getting toward the end. The, the basis, like this step, is like 75% of the work. And then once you get to the final highlights, it's really quick, comparatively. Because it's like one, two, then straight to the, and this is like one, two, three, four. Got to have a solid foundation and then the, the highlights go there quickly. No, no, it looks a little bit messy right now. Like I said, I might have to refine it. Pulling that shape in. And making sure we pop a few edges here and again cylindrical highlights are pretty pretty narrow um, this is a gold so it's reflective so it's going to be a little bit broader but like blacks and things like that it's just like that one little line and you know see when I turn it the light source like it travels up and down you got that like a little laser beam um, so you can represent that and that's got a little bit of that going on in there like the highlight doesn't travel all the way down. Paintbrush is like a really good <laughs> reflective example. Next color. So stepping it up, using that pool for, for reference. For, 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 for. Pull that V down a little bit. Since our angle is it's coming in, it's coming down and toward. Definitely gonna be cleaning this guy up. But you can see like we back away. Gets a little bit. Once it's blurry, once you squint. Coming up again. I might have got my highlights out of a line just a little bit. This one's kinda over the side, so definite adjustments. But you know. I could paint this thing a thousand times, wait for the perfect take, and then just do a voiceover, but I hate editing. You need to know that everybody's like imperfect. We're all learning, we're all working. There's not one magic knowledge base. It's constant, constant source learning it's looking a little bit better again I need to shift my highlight to this line and that would be more correct so I need some color on the other side of that line actually it might go this way just a little bit so I'm using that bright color to kind of mark that out I mean, and these are just kind of like little spot highlights right along that path. Alrighty, golds are finished. I did have to go in and touch this area up some, so drastic change there. Um, <clears throat> talking about the golds and the shapes, again, a little bit darker on the back, a little bit rougher um, as far as our blends and stuff. So, <clears throat> getting like 
planar highlight here, even though the shape has a break in the middle. Uh, making sure we got an edge highlight. Cone highlights here, so you have a triangle cylinder object. So that means that your highlight will flare as it moves down. Um, I did a few uh, like little spot uh, line highlights to make these look a little bit more interesting. Plus, they're going to show up in that view angle. Um, darker on these big flat planes with light coalescing a little bit on the bounce side and then bleeding down toward the bottom on the uh, there. It's just like a slight curve to it so I wanted to kind of exaggerate that a little bit. Um, I'm trying to think of any other areas that we haven't really addressed. You can always comment if you have a question about something. Um, now we're moving up the uh, mahogany slash burgundy color. So our original uh, mixture here, and let me move some things so you can see. All right, original mixture here is like heavy on the purple side with a lot of magenta. As we go forward, we're gonna add more red to it so that um, the red oxide, and then I have a little bit of uh, mahogany from Reaper here, just to shift things a little bit. You can tell there's like a little bit of a different tone. This is our value for the next step. So we add more of the uh, magenta and the red oxide to bring our value up and shifts toward the red. It's a complex color. We're kind of bubble gum at the base, shifting toward that red. Um, and this is the highlight that you're seeing in here and the difference in color that you see here. Uh, application wise, very volumetric with these, no non-metallics or things like that. Definitely a multiple coat color. The magenta in it makes it thin. Um, so when it dries, gets a little bit of that color seeing through. And you can see a few areas are patchy. Um, it's okay if it's in a highlight area where you're gonna move it up, go ahead, leave that patchiness and then move on to your next color again. We're painting over 90% of our previous layers as we move up because we are layer based in this tutorial at least So feel free to to keep things moving along a little bit quicker um, Seeing in here again think about what shadows will get knocked out right if I have a big Object like this all these shadows are going to get knocked out So I'll just go ahead and paint the whole object and leave shadows on the front and bottom side of it. Moving forward, as we add highlights, those will become our shadows, and so we have value in our shadows and value in our highlights and our objects. Makes things just a little bit more pleasing and complex. If you leave too much shadow when you're layering, of course things will get very narrow and you'll end up with a liney look with things. Really narrow, narrow highlights where you're not trying to overlap your other layer. So be generous with your layers as you move forward. All right, on our third color for the burgundy color. I don't know why I have such a hard time remembering that color. So let me mix up some more since we're running low. I got my magenta little dash of purple here. Lots of our red here. And you can see here's my starting color. Here's where I want to be. So now I take some of this cream color. There we go. That's exactly where we want to be. All right, pulling that in, mixing. I got my shadow, my mid, my first highlight. Now all the cloth is going to stop right about here. We'll have a few spots up in this area that are going to be that that brighter creme color. I'll come in here, shore this up a little bit, add some more color. So you see how the red shifts it but keeps it in our burgundy tone. I had some some thin that I was using. Use some thick paint on the cloth here. See this highlight here? And when I want to blend, what I'll do, kind of do a quick rinse on my brush, not all the way. See how I still have pigment in there? And you can do this with your tongue. Um, and then I'll pull across. See how that blends that out? And I'll pull across. 
across again. What I'm doing is putting a thin layer through that and boom, blend, right? Instead of a hard line for a layer. Now I'm gonna come over here. This hasn't been highlighted at all yet and I'm gonna lock in a layer. Just doing volumetrics, heightening the ups and downs, drawing attention to it. For the armor, you know, I need to address this. Um, for the armor, I'm coming in and you have to highlight in between these rivets. These rivets, they're just like little challenge rivets. Can you uh, get in there and then highlight the tops of the rivets and then pull your edge highlight along. We're going to pull more edge highlights on this color because the armor's like a little bit harder. Well, a lot harder than the fabric, but harder harder in um, you know an angled sense. So those angles are going to be a little bit brighter. So we're going to pop this color up a little bit more, hit the rivets, and edge highlight that armor. All right, let's look at painting some gems on our guy. We've got one gem here in the middle of the helmet, four around the staff, and two, one on either side here. Base coat in our violet that we already have. Uh, almost like our armor buildup, so we're going to go brighter. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit more purple to this for our value shift down. And then we're going to do consecutive swooshes. Smaller each time. So their gems are about the same tone, or at least his gems, the same tone as the uh, armor detailing, the Minoth. Um, so once that dries, I'm going to do one on screen, I'll do the others off screen. We're going to step it up, we can jump pretty significantly since it's in a small area, and a smaller swoosh at the bottom, because as light passes through tr something transparent, the color of what it transfers through is what comes out the other side. Okay, you can see there, already starting to look like a gem. That purple is aiding in that because it's got that deep, rich color. Now step it up again. Smaller swoosh. There, look at that. Yeah. See that gem shifting around, making sound effects, being happy. And we'll go almost to our cream color. Another little tiny swoosh. And then we're going to take a dot here. And we're just going to go boop. There you have it. Automatically looks shiny. Look at that. All right, I'm going to hit those other ones and we'll move on to the non metallics for the silver. All right, starting on our non metallics. Uh, our base color, of course, was the black and blue. We went in um, teal with Vallejo model color black, white turquoise, sorry, not teal. Close. Um, our base color is a mixture of that and the black. Uh, going in, not worrying about detail too much right now. Um, so with like the chain mail and things, just like we did up here with this patterning, light's going to blow out those shadows. Go ahead, just get it in there. Um, on your flat surfaces, you're sketching out where those light sources will be, this chain mail, um, it's okay to just kind of wet brush, leave a little bit of shadow, don't worry about like scrubbing and filling it in, like of course these areas are going to be pretty shadowed, so we'll go and spot highlight those. Um, this one, all the way up here, uh, I'll need the base coat, these little pips on the end of um, what looks like a nautical mine. Uh, and then tip of the spear needs to be a uh, focal point. So we're going to go up, highlight all the way to the edge here. Keep a little bit of shadow in the base of the blade. And then the reverse side, sketch in a couple low lights, reflection lights. So leave a little bit of shadow there. And then I'm going to drop the highlight all the way down to the helmet here, the Signar helmet. <clears throat> Hope you saw all that. I will do it one more time on the back side so you can see if I messed up and got everything off camera. A couple highlights here, starting at the base, 
and then about halfway. And then in here, doesn't really matter where you put them. <clears throat> Metal is finicky. Just break it up into two sort of highlights. Like so. Uh, and then as we increase, we're going to take our Minoth white highlight here and mix up, moving down that path. And then this has a curve in it, so that's where our bright point is going to be. And then a little bit less with the brush pressure as we move, just tickling the tops of those pieces of chain. Same thing over here. I'm going to stop in between each step and kind of show you where I'm at. You see I'm using the side of the brush, that way I'm hitting, hitting tops, so I'm getting the chain links. Almost like a dry brush, but you got a fully loaded layer on your brush. You guys' models will be a little bit cleaner than mine. I, chainmail does not support well in a 3D print, so you might see a little wonkiness down in there. Um, I'm going to get a few of these points down here, chainmail hanging out underneath, um, and then continuing our layers. Go ahead and edge highlight. Helps give you the illusion that it's working. And we will continue on. Alright, we've moved one step up. We're going to continue to step up in the same way. We're doing the edge of the blade each time. Just, just layering it makes it a little bit easier to increase the value of it. Um, here, filling in each diamond and then kind of edge highlighting each one next to it. Um, and again, just hitting the tops of those areas. Let's do the time warp again. We got tornadoes where we are now. I am sitting through tornadoes to get a deliverable done. Because I live in a gig economy. I'm just trying to make some money. Painting some miles. So pulling our highlight in on that chain mail, making it nice and shiny. My son's coming back. You're about to hear him. He's going to go, Dad! Just getting in here. Getting some brightness in there. And get the top here. Sort of letting it break up a little bit as we go. Hitting some spots. Some dink dinks here and there. The chain mail laying it different. patterns. It's about as bright as we'll go for like that little section back there. Um, ugh, and then blade and then I'm going to sit back down because I've been pushing for a few days here. Going a little brighter. We're making sure that we have a really broad highlight on the top of that blade just to be like Waka! it's dangerous. Stabby. Bam. I'm going to get you. All right, we've taken our blade all the way to the Minoth white highlight, um, keeping it warm, keeping it nice and shiny. Very happy with that color combination, um, that Minoth white highlight bringing the warmth into our blade. Um, I did forget a few areas. I've got to do the little pips on the mine. I know I talked about that. It seems like a minute ago for you guys. Um, these little spikes on his hand, uh, need to get those in and there's another spot I think I forgot. I see some purple I forgot right here too. I'm going to grab those little spots and then we will move on to the blacks. So we need to do our muted blacks for all of the symbols, the nine symbols on Krios. All right, let's talk about the blacks in here. I'll stretch since I'm standing up. Um, this is a little a lot simpler than it would seem. Take some black, get your initial coat on there. Take some of our Menoth white. That is our white for this model. Um, so these big ones, the small ones, just edge highlight. 
and edge highlight the lower ones less than the the, um, the more central ones or the bigger ones um, and keep your edge highlights kind of small so on these panels I'm just going to take a gray and anything that's facing forward or upward gets filled in It'd really help if you could see that forward and upward right it's a challenge it's not as big as the challenge is yep. so that way you're getting these plane breaks in there in tone that help break the shape up a little bit and give it some detail and it's black it's catching a little bit of light so it's getting it's it's getting that gray tone uh, natural light alright and then we increase in value and then all we do is edge highlight so we increase one and edge 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 See, this is how this one looks. That Minoth symbol. It's like a little stick figure guy going, yeah! It's been so long since I've played. Played any, like, War Machine game or had time to read lore and things. I try to rest my eyes. Chill. Sit in front of a nice big TV. Drink a beer. Alright, there's that one. But the mouth guy is pretty pretty dogmatic, right? It's pretty scary. And then we edge highlight just the tippy tippy toppies and very little. So moving like toward the outside, toward the high points, and that gives us that kind of. That's it. That's it. Three steps. Well, four if you count the base coat. Little tippy. Watch out for your other objects. All right. Let's move on the face, which I have base coated in a mix of mahogany and our red oxide, which is just, it's a, it's a dirt red, right? Well, it's dirt red from where I'm from, because that's what the, this is the color of our dirt. Because of all of the, what is it, rust oxide? Um, all right, face, let's look at it. Let's take our rusty color here let's grab a skin tone a skinny tone what's this this is that new copper eh, I don't know about that one I want something with like some some color in it I'll be right back well mm -hmm. yeah rosy flesh skin tones can really be anything um, so we're going to take some of this rosy flesh and bring up the value. Bring the value up. Make it valuable. Now this guy's got a lot of scars. I don't know if I want to... really address those immediately or after the fact. But now I'm going to trace in high points. I think I'm going to ignore scars for now. But right now, I'm, I'm getting the shapes of the face. I'm starting to lay them out a little bit. You can see I'm going in, eyelid, nose, leaving deep creases that we can glaze out later if they're too dark. Uh, but for now, 
I want all these contours illustrated. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and gonna do that. Other side's gonna be a lot harder because he's got a freaking shoulder pad in the way. All right, one step up extra from the previous step. Um, mapping out the face features a little bit more, so we've added some more of our rosy flesh to our oxide, um, bringing him up. I also blocked in his hair so I could see the interaction between the skin tone and the hairline and what I need to do to sort of make sure my shadows right under the hairline are correct, correct distance. Um, I think I'm going straight to rosy flesh here. I'm thinking of older guy. I want him to show scars. So two dots for the nose. Two dots for the nose. You know, it's like, look, boom. There you go. You got that nice ridge line going. I'm not gonna paint a lot of this on the. See, I can't even talk when I got a brush on there. Uh, I'm not gonna paint a lot of this on camera because I need to see what's going on with his face because the older older faces are way more detailed the bottom of the eye there I'm just starting to pull those facial <laughs> facial features out um, leaving a little bit of our previous layer and I do spit blend a lot so I'll lick the brush and then make sure that it's like really watery and then come in and sort of push highlights in so again, spit, spit bending is like glazing. If you if you don't like to eat your paint, then make a glaze. All right, this is the next step we've got here completed. Um, getting a little bit more careful around the details each time. We're gonna take some of this rosy flesh and see if we can see it. I'll put it over here. Over here, we're gonna add a little bit of yellow. Brighten it up. A little bit of our Minoth white highlight. See how that fleshens up, it's still flesh. Just got a little bit of that yellow to brighten it up some. Now, let's see how that looks. I always start kind of with the nose. Go inside. Previous highlights. I like it. It's a good step up. There we go. See that little bit of difference? That's where we want to be. All right, just adding a little bit more of our Minoth white highlight to this for our final highlight. Um, that doesn't mean we're done, though, or anywhere close to done, because we still got to do eyeballs and lips and scar colors. The ear there. Nose again. A little bit of brightness on those areas that are popping out. And it's real, real, real tiny with these. And it was my son. Just letting it fly. Bottom of that lip. Highlighting those volumes. Looking like a grumpy old man. Alright, just to show you where I'm at. I'm glazing in a little bit of pink and yellow or magenta and our skull for brown uh, to do some uh, pre work for some scar tissue. Um, I also put in eyebrows and eyeballs. I'm not going to pay the eyeballs on this guy like on uh, camera because they were a pain. Uh, he's got one that's kind of squinty and he's got that one eyebrows um, But painting in the eyebrows with a black brown same with the pupils because black browns flow off the brush Easier and you want to make your life easier when you're uh, flowing Don't use a tiny brush with no bristles on it because the paint's gonna dry and you're not gonna get it off on the brush and It's gonna be like a little weird textured ball that like kind of rubs off the end of the brush instead of like nice paint that flows and is liquid um, That's my opinion and I can put an eyeball in. Uh, <laughs> um, so I'm going to take my flesh tones in different mixtures and start glazing my shadows in um, and or glazing my shadows up 
that makes sense. Um, up and around and getting my, my different tones in there. Um, and also at the same time washing out those um, really vibrant pinks right now. Don't want to look like he has war paint. All right, so lots of little face adjustments. Um, bottom lip took a little bit of our um, magenta and red, mixed it in with the rosy flesh to get the, a little bit of lip color in there. Um, adjusted this eye over just a little bit. Um, a lot of little glazes in here. You can see the shadows aren't as stark. And we gave him stubble. Uh, stubble is this color. This color over here is a glaze, so this is really watery. A um, little bit of our flesh tone mixed into our blue gray that we used for the um, the steel, mid tone of the steel. So a glaze of blue or a dark kind of desaturated blue it makes a really really good stubble. Um, just glaze that in the bottom of your face, follow the cheek line, and there you'll have it. Plus he's got, you know, this is a, a scar in here. He's got that little scar popping up. He's got scars there. Um, glazing over those, taking that uh, really stark pink out of the equation and just kind of naturalizing them more. Uh, that's it. Uh, hair, um, I'm going to go a little bit risky and I'm going to put like a little white streak in his hair. Uh, that's the first time I guess he's been seen, so I get the... Uh, well, I get the chance at uh, <laughs> getting some things by. I might have to paint over it, but maybe not. Uh, I think it would be fitting for him as the Grizzled War Vet to have that, uh, that little streak in his hair. Um, so going white-black again, I'm going to paint this off. Uh, so we'll have highlights that come around the top of the hair and then kind of a gray spot in here that's running down the side. A uh, little, little bit of uh, age on him. All right, we got face done. We got his little gray streak in his hair. I like it. <laughs> I'm pleased with myself. It happens every so often. Um, so now, let's get this helmet done and then get the base done. Let's get out of here. Let's go home, take some pictures. Uh, so this area in here, doing a kind of a brown non-metallic start. So I went over my base black, added some of the uh, oxide to it. And then we're going to take our um, Minoff highlight and pull it this way and do kind of a muted uh, non-metallic for that. So I need a little bit more of this on my palette. That nice pop. Like a Pringles can. Not sponsored. Um, <clears throat> are you supposed to say that when you like name products? Not sponsored. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so you can see here we got kind of a brown gray that comes out when we add our Minoff highlight. And just like all of our other non metallics, we go in and start layering up the areas that need highlights. We got cylinders, spheres, that's about it. We got cylinders and spheres. So, that sort of highlight for those objects. I'm starting to get a headache, God. I'm not gonna go too, well, I guess I'm gonna go fairly bright on these. But a little bit rougher since it should be like a battle damage helmet. It's got a sword sticking through. That's not a sword, it's a spear. Recording? All right. <laughs> I'm recording. Um, so we did some non metallics here, stepping up uh, with our Minoth highlight. You can see the, the path here all the way up to a stark Minoth highlight. And using a little bit of stutter step with the brush to show some weathering, we're going to add a little bit of gunk to this guy. Now we're going to work on the blue. So Exile Blue is our base coat. It's going to take a few coats. Alright, I have a base coat of our um, like our gold-ish base coat with some black in it to desaturate it. And I'm going to bring my yellow through that so that the yellow stays desaturated to not pull attention away from anything else on the model. The blue is a little bit jarring. Um, so I'm going to figure out a way to kind of weather that up and keep it Maybe just like a little 
notion to the side. Um, so our non-metallic gold, keeping it muted, layering it up just like our other non-metallics, keeping it scratchy because uh, it is um, a beheaded warjack. So he's been taken out and used as a trophy. The blue, uh, we're using the Signar blue base on top of the Exile blue. We're going to do one mixture in between that to blend it up. So Exile blue, I know I'm covering like two different things at the same time. Uh, so we're coming in here, volumetric highlight, following the light source that his mace has because they're about the same shape. Uh, I'm just putting a highlight on the back again. I'm going to keep it a little bit muted, probably add some rusts and dirt and stuff in there to um, keep that blue from being really, really distracting. All right, in order to keep this um, non-metallic desaturated, <clears throat> taking a little bit of German yellow RLM 05, very specific uh, yellow. Once I get to a point where this starts oversaturating, I add this for value increase instead. Uh, so that keeps it desaturated, right? I've been using this um, Sculpher's Brown to up our value. And so now, when I add this German Yellow, see how it, it kind of muds it out a little bit? And that keeps that gold less lustrous than the Menoth Gay Creos. Because you can't out gold the men off guy after he's taken your head um, so we'll continue along increasing the value and again basic dom metallics I'm a little bit in a rush at the end of this video so I apologize for skipping along quickly got tornadoes everywhere gotta take pictures tonight hopefully the power stays on I live in Alabama All those factors. Gotta eat some food. Gotta buy groceries. Shit. So, you can see there's a clear difference between that gold. Luster is less. Richness is less. We want to keep it that way. Alright. <clears throat> we got that highlighted up. We only went up as far as our German yellow. A desaturated sand yellow, pale yellow could work. This one's got like a little bit of a green tinge to it. So, it, gold's got that weird green brown kind of in its highlights. So, you could mix like a little bit of green in there. I'm going to continue to highlight with our Signar base here. Just roughly sort of sketching out the highlight. When I say roughly, my body automatically just starts moving a little bit too quick. I don't want to be like super quick. I don't want to hit any work that I've already done. Doing the pure base now instead of the mixture. Just getting a little bit brighter on the back side of that head. I don't think it has to be too bright with what we're going to do. Damage wise. And then the red eyeball started with this, the our red oxide, and where's the name? This is just red. This is model color red. Um, right here on the palette, mix a little bit of that. Woo, thunder. Boom, boom. Going. I wonder if I could do like a paint in the rain. That would, that would work. Be interesting. Uh... I thought I needed to like make a reality show for painters. They have it for pinata makers. I saw that on Netflix. It's like not sponsored. Um, <laughs> that uh, there's a freaking reality show for painting, highlighting toward the back side of the eye. If they can do pinata makers, I mean, there's enough people playing D and D that we could do a uh, reality show for mini painters. I don't even want to compete on it. I just want to like 
host it. <laughs> Maybe not host it, but like come up with it. I know I can't produce it. I ain't got no money. I paint miniatures for a living. Oh my god. That Vallejo Red has a flavor. Uh, just to highlight a little bit toward the back side of the head there. We're going to take... Ooh, orange. Alright, there's some orange. Orange and blue. Orange and blue are good colors to mix together. Our red oxide is going to help too. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of this. A little bit of that. Toss it in there like spices. And then water it down. So we're gonna get in here, drop a little bit of stuff going on. Watering it down and then kind of glazing it. So I dirt, dirty it up just a little bit. Like that. It balances us out a little bit. We're also going to take some of this dark. The same thing. We're going to play with some glazes here for a minute. I, mean, I want it to look like it was sitting in the mud and he came by and just went can over on it. No golden rust, but it gets dirty. Yeah, I'm gonna dirty this up a little bit, and then we'll talk about it. All right, I did two value increases in our Signar Blue, using our Menoth White, and just added some some scratches. So one layer was like a lot of scratches, and then I just added like a few spot scratches with a real drastic increase in in value. And I think. The muddying up and stuff like the blue that's in the metal balances out a little bit more. Um, and it, the reason, like, I think that the, that blue, you know, you have so much burgundy in here, and that little dot of blue, the smaller point, like, kind of can become a focal point. So I'm trying to avoid that, have that red next to it, the orange mixed in with it, just to like detract from the strength of that blue in there. He's a uh, I'd say he's got a horn. <laughs> uh, okay, base. Um, base, we're just going to take our Kiaki. Kiaki. Do a little bit of dry brushing. We're going to add a tuft. I had some tufts over here. I'll have to trim our tufts. Snip, snip. Um, I'll have to find my scissors. Um, so when you trim your tufts, don't just go straight across, go in like this, randomize it, just like they do at the, when they take your hair and they go making it uneven so you don't have these weird flat areas in your hair. Uh, anyway, I got, <laughs> you got my uh, khaki there. I'm gonna grab a dry brush. A dry brush that is dry. There I go. Softly. Increase the value of our dirt here and watch out for tootsies. Concentrating real hard. Don't need to hit, hit these feet. And then I'll take a little bit of this German yellow here and do like a swirl. Wipe the brush off. Just warm it up a little bit from neutral. Like that. Our grass is gonna be probably gonna stick it like kinda in the back here. Yeah, that way the base is kinda leveled out with him. He's got some deep shadow back there. Wipe out this brush. I'm gonna trim up this tuft. 
and I'll be back. I took my grass tuft and cut little pieces off of it because he's really low to the ground. Don't want anything blocking the model. And then I have another tuft kind of in the back so that you get a little bit of texture with him in the in the front. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the base. Let's get that black ring on there. Let the glue dry because I got super glue in on that uh, on the base there. I'm gonna get my gonna get my size what size brush is this? Size six or nine? Don't know which one. Ugh. Get the ring on. And again, I apologize for rushing through like some of the last bits on this. If you have questions, again, I'm always happy to answer. I know a few guys have asked a few questions. And it's, it's always nice to see that engagement with the stuff putting out there. Making sure you're getting some edu edumacations. Brushing off some of that flock. Always satisfying to get to this part, man. It's like, whew. I think we are between 23 and 25 hours for this guy. Um, I don't know how long the video is. Probably not that long because I was pushing pretty hard on getting uh, things painted. And. Yeah, having a store, painting models, rushing every single day of your life, trying to get stuff done. It's rough. It's satisfying though, I can say that. It's really fun painting models, meeting people, talking to people, being able to like just feel like a go-to for a community too feels good it's like if if people are painting models they come to my shop and that feels so good to be like oh if you want to paint a model go talk to clay he'll get you he'll get you set up pick out your colors get your scheme going and now i can share that with the world or all hundred of you who watch my videos because that's about how many views I get per video. <laughs> Maybe in like 10 years it'll be like, oh, there's like a thousand of you. Maybe there'll only be 10 left. Who knows? All right. Tufts should be dry. We're going to take a little bit of this uh, Gargax sewer. We're going to break out our Turbo Dork dry palette. So I get all my crap out of the way. Yeah, so you can see it. Blah, blah, blah. This thing, fun. I'm gonna add a little bit of water in here because I want to thin it a little bit. It's like a green brown. We're gonna add this to the. You see how cool this palette is? Look at that. It doesn't. Nothing sticks to it. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, so I'm gonna add like a little bit of shadow slash dirt to the bottoms of our grass tufts so we can kind of see these. Just kind of poke it in there. <laughs> Shouldn't say that. Yesterday was Valentine's Day. Woohoo! Hope you guys had a good Valentine's Day. And if you're watching this month later, hope, hope you had a good Christmas. I don't know that shit. Man, it's thundering outside. Oh, God. Contrast paint also tastes bad. Alright. Little bit of this yellow and khaki to knock it back. And let's get the tops of them tufts. This is it. This is the end. These are the final brush strokes as long as I did my job right. And I thank you all for watching. <sighs> Have a good night. Avoid storms. They suck. And uh, as always. Happy painting.